Hello and thank you for watching my videos. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. On this video, we are covering CCNA semester two, routine and switching essentials. This is chapter four, routine concepts. Chapter four, routine concept is separated on three sections. We have section 4.1, initial configuration of router, then section 4.2, routine decisions, section 4.3, routine operations. Section 4.1, initial configuration of a router. Upon completion of this section, you should be able to describe the primary functions and features of a router, configure a router to route between multiple directly connected networks. Characteristics of network. Speed is the main characteristic of a network. This measures of the, the measure of the data rate in a bit per second of a given link. Then we look at the cost indicates the general expense for purchasing of network component and installation and maintenance of the network. Then we have security. This indicates how protected the network is, including the information that is transmitted over the network. So the first thing we think about the network is how fast is it? Can it cope with our, our demands? And then we look at the cost. If we can buy the latest and greatest, that's going to be always the fastest. And does our network support any security, like uh, cryptography? Can we encrypt any our data? The next thing we can think of is availability. Is a measurement measure of the probability that the network is available for use when it is required. Then we look at the scalability, which indicates how easily the network can accommodate more users and data transmission requirements, as well as reliability. This indicates the dependability of the component that make up the network, such as the dependability of routers, switches, PC, and servers, and so on. Often, this is measured as a probability of a failure or as the mean time between failures, MTBF. Why routers? The router is responsible for routing of the traffic between the networks. So as you can see on the screen here, we have two networks. We have a network on the left connected to switch one, and the network on the right connected to switch two. So the router, the job of the router is to take the packets from this network and, tr and send it here or route them to this sec second network. Here on this screen that we see, the router has two directly connected network and that's the, uh, the code as you see here is C. So 192.168.1.0 is directly connected on this side. So on the fast ethernet, so let me just mark it. So that's one network here, network on this side and the second network is on this side. Okay. A router is a specialized computer. So remember that every time we connect a router directly with a computer, we're going to use a crossover cable. Well, this is the reason. A router is a specialized computer. It sends packets over the data network and router is responsible for interconnecting networks by selecting the best path for a packet to travel and forwarding packet to the destination. So the router will pick up the best path to go to the, for the packet to, to send it to the destination. Regardless of their functions, size or complexity, all routers model are essentially computers and they, as a normal computer, will require operating system, CPU, central processing unit, random access memory, or RAM, and read-only memory, ROM. Routers also have a special memory that includes flash and non-volatile random access memory or NVRAM. So let's look at the router memory. Here we have a memory, volatile or non-volatile. This means uh, is it doesn't need power to retain the, the information or does it, it doesn't need power to retain the information. Stores, what stores in there? So the first thing is we look at the RAM, random access memory. RAM is volatile. The, it means it needs to be refreshed to retain the, the information that it has on the memory. In RAM, we store running operating systems or running iOS, running configuration file, IP routing, if you have IP routing tables, and ARP tables. Then we store any packet buffers, that, the packets that need to go to, to the destination as they leave in our router, they're going to be stored on RAM. Then we have ROM, read-only memory. This is non-volatile, that means that no electricity needed to retain the information. In the ROM, we store boot up instructions basic diagnostic software that will complete like post power and self test and limited operating system or limited ios then another special type of memory the router has is called nvram 
from the name this is non-volatile RAM in here we store startup configuration file then we have a flash flash is non-volatile as well and it stores operating iOS operating system and any, any other files for example if it was a switch in there we would store the VLAN database as well okay so these are the three types of memory so when the router boots up first it looks to the boot up well first it does the basic diagnostic software so post power and self-test making sure that all components are ready uh, are there to start with and ready to, to perform then we look at the boot up instruction which will say okay well go to flash load up the operating system find iOS from flash and load this iOS into RAM right now it's called running operating system the next step is to find up the startup configuration file on the NVRAM and load this into RAM and now it's called a running configuration file if you can't find the iOS and we can't find uh, for example iOS we still have a limited iOS that we can store or we can load just for recovery or troubleshooting router backplane so if we look at the back of the router what do we see there we see the console ports this router is 1941 series so 1941 series is going to have two console ports one normal RJ45 console and a new type of console which is USB type B console we will have an AUX port this is auxiliary port it, si it serves the same purpose as a console out of band configuration to brand new router but through uh, modem some uh, LAN interfaces uh, gigabit ethernet interfaces some wide area network interfaces where the modules we can populate this router with a new uh, VIC and we have uh, some uh, store of two 4 GB flashcard slots as well as some USB ports where we can transfer iOS and other files router in LAN and wide area network routers can connect multiple networks together routers have multiple interfaces each on a different IP network the primary responsibility of a router is to direct packets by determining the best path to send the packet forwarding packets towards a destination so as the packet comes in on the router the router is going to go through the routing table find out do I know well read the destination of the packet what does it say and then look at the routing table do I know how to get to that destination if I do know how to get to the destination then I'll choose the, the exit interface it says on the routing table routers use routing table to determine the best path to send the packets routers encapsulate the packet and forward it to the interface indicated on the routing table like I said okay so as a look at these slides here yeah? as the packet comes in the router one the destination is coming from this network from uh, 192 sorry from 192.168.1.10 and it's going here to 192.168.3.0 so as it's coming to the, the router the router is going to read okay well it's going to this destination do i have it on the table so it's not directly connected so not there it's not this one either and it matches this one it's got static configuration now as if as there is a match on the routing table for the destination that's the destination now it looks at okay well how do i get there i go there via 192.168.2.0 so now it needs to do another lookup how to how to get to this ip address then when it does the second IP, second lookup it will find out that okay well this interface here is if i want to get to 192.168.2.0 how do i get there using serial zero 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 cool ready so it's going to encapsulate the packet again and it's going to send it to, towards router 2 now as the packet comes in on the router 2 let me just clear this as the packet comes in on the router 2 now the router 2 is going to look okay well destination is 192.168.3.0 and look at the routing table again and find out okay well i got directly connected here and i'm going to use fast ethernet 00, zero to get to the destination so routing tables can be created manually we can create all the routing tables with the static routes not very scalable you can use it for small networks but not for large networks i mean you can imagine creating static routes for the internet routers like 400,000 routes yeah not very scalable or dynamically this is using routing protocols we have interior gateway routing protocol exterior gateway routing protocol so but there's still a routing protocol to build the routing tables dynamically Routing protocol exchange network topology path information with other routers. So they are very chatty. The routing protocol, they explain, okay, whatever they know, they tell their neighbor. 
the routers use its routing table to determine the best path to forward the packet. When the router receives a packet, it will examine its destination IP address and searches for the best network address match in the routing table. The routing table entries also includes the interface to be used to forward the packet. Once a match has been found, the router encapsulates the IP packet into the data link frame of outgoing or exit interface. The packet then is forwarded towards its destination. The router supports three packet forwarding mechanisms. So we have process switching, fast switching, and Cisco Express forwarding, the latest and the greatest. So when the packet arrives at the router, the router will examine the destination IP address of that packet. Look at the routing table and try to match the destination IP address on the routing table. Now the longest match, m as many mid bits they're going to match, that's going to be preferred. So it's called longest match preferred. Then the routing table uh, entries also includes, the, the routing table will tell, okay, well, to get to the destination, you need to use FA00. Let's just imagine that it does need to use FA00. And for this reason, it's going to encapsulate now with a new new layer two information, like his, he's going to be the source and destination is going to change to the next hop. Like we said, there's three types of packet forwarding mechanism. First, first, and the oldest is process switching. Now process switching, early switching method, applies to both routers and multi-layer switches. This is an older packet forwarding mechanism. When a packet arrives on the interface, it's sent or is forwarded to the control plane where the CPU is located there. The CPU will examine the routing table, will determine the, root, the exit interface, and then it will forward it. But then it will happen, the same thing will happen for every packet. Every packet has to go to the CPU, CPU will look at the routing table, determine the exit interface, and it will forward it. Now, this is too much, well, too much work for the CPU. We want to leave CPU to do other stuff. Analogy for this will be process switching, solves the problem by doing mass longhand, even if the problem is identical. Second time of, of packet forwarding is called fast switching. As the router had to process more packet, it was determined process switching was not fast enough. Next evolution in packet switching was fast switching. This does apply on both routers and multi-layer switches. The first packet is process switched. Same as old, old fashioned, yeah? Goes to the CPU, CPU looks at the routing table, determines the exit interface, and it forwards it towards the exit interface. But before it does that, it will build a fast forwarding cache. So the next packets that come in, they don't, they don't go to the CPU, they just read this cache and they will be sent towards the destination. The latest one is this, well, analogy for this will fast switching, solves the problem by doing maths longhand one time and remembering the answer for subsequent identical problems. The third, time the third type of forwarding is called Ceph or Cisco Express forwarding. So this is preferred and default Cisco IOS packet forwarding mechanism for routers and multi-layer switches. Ceph will copy the routing table to the forwarding information base, FIB, and it will copy the adjacency table. It, the adjacency table will be created from our table. Ceph is discussed more in detail in CCMP switch. So what happened here? The router will pre-build the table, the forwarding information base table. So they will build this right from the routing table and it will fill, build like the next hop kind of from the adjacency table uh, so sorry, sorry it will build the adjacency table from arp table so this time the packets as they come in they don't go to the cpu at all they don't bother the cpu they go directly to the exit interface this is ceph solves every possible problem ahead of time in a spreadsheet connect devices default gateways to enable network access, devices must be configured with IP address information to identify the appropriate IP address. This has to be unique, a host on a local network, subnet mask, which identify which, with which network subnet and host can communicate, and the default gateway. Identify the router to send the packet to when the destination is not on the same local network or subnet. So, for PC to be working on the or to communicate on the network, it needs an IP address, which has to be unique. And with that IP address, it needs a subnet mask to know what, what is a network. And it needs a default gateway if the packets, they need to go to the remote network. For this PC1 and, P and this server, the default gateway is going to be 192.168.1.1. If they do need to talk to this web server down here, then obviously they're going to need to send it to the default gateway. 
if they are communicating locally on the network, they don't need to troubleshoot the router or the default gateway. Documenting the network, the network, network documentation should identify device names, interface used in the design, IP addresses, and subnet mask, default gateway addresses. It's useful in documents include network topology diagram, which we, has, we have a, a logical topology and, and physical topology. Physical topology is like how the cables are laid down on the network, rather than logical topology is how the, actually the data is going to move around the network. So for example, to, if you want to document this network, you have the list here. All you have to do is put, that's going to be 192.168.1.0. Well, how do we find that out? We found it from, from this table here. So in the fast ethernet, let me just mark it here. Um, fast ethernet, for example, fast ethernet, 00, zero here. 192.168.1.1 is our IP address. And the subnet is 255.255.255.0, which means this is our network, 192.168.1.0. So there we go, we put it here. That's our fast ethernet. Then, dot one is our IP address. The second serial interface, which is this one here, serial 00, serial 00, is 192.168.2.1, the IP address, and same subnet mask as the previous one. So we know, okay, well, that's, that's that network here, because from our serial interface we can find that out same thing we do it for the routers we can see uh, dot two for the router two sorry and fast ethernet 192.168.3.0 because we do it from fast ethernet so if i ask you say to you okay well what's the ip address of the pc1 for example you need to know that okay well pc1 since it says here anyway if i did hide it anyway you would say okay is this one because it's it's on this network so it's got to be 10 and then pc2 it's dot 3 because it's on 3 network 3.0 network so it's going to be dot 3.10 this network this ip address here so you put this here and this here if it's an exam questions kind of okay a host a host can assign ip address can be assigned an ip address information either using statically so you can go to the each host and configure it manually IP address and you need to configure an IP address you need to configure a subnet mask you need to configure a default gateway prefer DNS server alternate DNS server and and so on all this it's not scalable you can do it for like a few computers but when it starts getting like a big company many computers static uh, assign IP address statically is it's not scalable at all or we can have it dynamically dynamically we involve an IP TCP server who's going to sign IP addresses for all our client machines. Now, all the client machines, you will have a, a dynamic IP addresses. Printers for devices that don't move around our network, like printers, servers, routers, switches, we can assign them static IP addresses. Configuring routers. So first to configure a router, you need to go to the global configuration mode. You need to remember this mode. You look at this. So this mode tells us that we are in privilege mode, privilege exec mode, which means we are like administrator of the router. We can pretty much do anything to the router. This is just the name, right? So the name of the router. So to configure anything on this router, first we have to go to configure terminal. And it says the command here says enter configuration commands, one per line, and with control forward slash that. Control is that together. So the first thing is we need to identify the routers. For example, we're saying router one host name, command that r1 this is locally significant only you can have all the routers call just said router there's you know you don't have to configure the host name well in some some situation you do have to configure the host name like for example when you configure uh, certificates you have to give a name otherwise there's no certificates but anyway this is locally significant so the only reason why we give names is so we can identify so especially when we tell net or ssh this router we can identify that it's correct router then after we configure the name we need to configure some kind of like a security or secure management access for example at the moment we are creating enable so when somebody types enable they need to know the secret which is the secret is class so it's like a password yeah class so our secret this this password is going to be encrypted by default it's going to be encrypted the latest 
Cisco IOS is or will encrypt this in, in SHA encryption, one way hashing, or the bit older one, they will encrypt it in MD5. For example, here we want to uh, create a username. So username, like a local database, username admin, and with a secret, which is class. The password of admin is class. And we say line console zero. So if somebody connects to the, t to the console line, they need to put know the password of Cisco. That's our password. Remember the passwords, they start with a letter. So you, can st you can't start with a number or you can't start with a space either. So you can put as many spaces as you want. That's not part of your password. So it has to start with letters. So if I put Cisco here like this, Cisco, and say by mistake or not mistake, I put two spaces like this. Now that's part of your password. All that including the spaces is part of your password. So trailing spaces, they will become part of your password. Uh, leading spaces, not. This I'm telling you because especially on, on the classes, every time the student create the password, they put that space in there by mistake. And then they turn around and say, oh, I can't log in, I can't log in. You know, and all I do is go in there, put Cisco space and I'm in. Okay, because I tell you to use the space and use the question mark, you know, when you, if you pay attention, always using the question mark, space question mark, there's nothing in, just press enter. But no, with the password, make sure you don't put any spaces, yeah? So get rid of this. Login, this login says use this password for logins, exit. Then here we creating a domain, we creating our certificates. So we, we allow in only SSH. SSH is encrypted uh, protocol. So to do, to access our router with SSH, we need to create a certificate. Certificate requires three things to, to, to create the certificate. First, you need to have a name. So you can't have just router. So you can't have a default name. Then you need to have a domain name. So IP domain name cisco.com. So have a domain name. If it's a real domain, your router, your PC, once it connects to SSH, is not gonna mourn. If it's a made up domain name, whatever you call to call it, the PC is gonna give you a warning, say, oh, this domain, we can't trust it. Then we create a certificate. The certificate to create is crypto key generate RSA 1024. That's you create the certificate. Now, sometimes this command all together, it doesn't work. So here, you can press enter here, press enter, and then it will ask you what is the key, and you put 1024. Higher the keys, uh, certificate more, more secure. But more processing you have to, the router has to do to uh, decrypt that communication. Okay, then we go to the telnet lines, so line VTY0, 0 to 4, line VTY0 to 4, transport input SSH. So what we are saying, we only allow SSH to go up to our router, not telnet. By default, it's transport input all. And then we say login local. If we say login local, Login local says, okay, well, use a local database. So login local is saying use a local database, which is this one here, All right? Username, admin, secret, and class. If you just say login without the local, just login, it says the password should be there in next to your login. So it should be under PTY here. And uh, this command service password encryption, what it's gonna do is gonna encrypt any password that is not encrypted by default. Now this password, secret is encrypted by default this password here is encrypted by default so you don't need to worry about it but this one here is not so you will encrypt this password with the service password encryption cool banner message of the day and then okay when you create a banner it's like a it's like a warning to whoever is remotely connecting to your network so banner message of the day or to anyone connecting to your router i should say message of the day authorized users only so here do not use any welcoming uh, uh, words like welcome or come in or whatever don't say it because then you can't prosecute whoever has been hacking you the next thing is you want to save the configuration so anything that you did is just like opening a notepad and writing in that notepad but if you don't save the notepad uh, nothing's going to be there so copy the running configuration from ram what you're doing whatever is stored in ram you want to copy to nvram non-volatile RAM, uh, random access memory. Okay, it's going to ask you for the destination file name. You can copy with a different destination file name. You don't have to copy with the startup config. But once the router boots up, it's going to look out for this file. If it's not there, 
it's gonna not load anything but you can copy something else it doesn't have to be here this is just press enter if you agree with that if you don't agree you just can put like r1 config for example and so on type whatever you want to configure the interfaces you have to access that interface for example in this case g00 we access the interface here always put the description description link to LAN. you can say whatever you want but as long as there's a description there and then give an IP address. So 192.168.10.1.255.255.255.0. That's the IP address. And as soon as you do no shutdown, this interface is actually the router is going to build the routing table as well. So it's going to say, okay, well, I've got directly connected route to this network. So it's going to put that network on the routing table, the one that you see on red. As well as the, the interface should go up. First, should change to state down. And then layer one and layer two will go, should transition to up. If it doesn't you have a problem so you have to check the cable whatever the physical cable maybe layer 2 information whatever it should be going up and then we go to the second interface for example uh, say serial 00 here so interface serial 0 forward slash 0 forward slash 0 now I would need to tell you that don't always look if I give you like this and then you say oh, okay well it's serial s 0 0 0 s 0 forward slash 0 forward slash 0 your router might not be the same so you always run show IP interface brief to see what does your router have what kind of interfaces maybe for your interface it's not S0000 maybe for you in your router it's S20 could be so that's for that reason you run show IP interface brief to find out what is your what is the name of your interfaces again description give an IP address give it a clock rate if it's a DCE and then do not shut down. So DCE, for example, some is it's it's a service provider. It always gives a clock in for synchronization process. Now we are never going to be the oh well unless we work for a service provider ISPs. We're always going to be the customer, so we pretty much don't run the clock rate. Anyway, clock rate if if your configuration like this back to back, always configure it. Even if the ones that you not show, you configure this command show controllers. S000 for example to see if we are DC or DTE it doesn't matter just try it everywhere and see if it can config if it works if it doesn't it can be a small warning that's it go to the other side and configure the clock rate okay that here for example it says layer layer one is down uh, right and if you can tell me why well you can't tell me because you're listening but I would ask you why the reason is because we haven't configured this side. When we configure this side, the interface will transition to up. Statically assign IPv6 addresses to the host, so we can go to the same as IPv4, but we can go to IPv6 and give an IP address. Again, not very scalable. So first you give an IP address, then the prefix length, and then the gateway. The gateway can be can be linked local address as well, right? Um, so for example, forward slash 64, says this is the network yeah so this is our network because a 64 bits is our network so 2001 this is 16 bits here db8 number 16 that's 32 acad that's number 16 that's 48 and one that's another 16 bits there's four three zeros missing there it's compressed so that's 64 bit that's our address so same with the router here we can give this router we can give a link local address as well same you have to do the preferred dns and the alternate dns as well if you go to the router its configuration is very similar to ipv4 it's just uh, well if you change the description it's going to change it for ipv4 as well they share the description but in this case uh, the configuration you just add ipv6 and then the address like i told you this is the, our network 2001 db8 ac ad1 that's our network 16 bits 16 16 and another 16 that's 64 bits together go to the server interface do the same thing as you can see it put the clock rate again you don't these two they will share the information so if you have both running like for example if it's a, a dual stack if it's running ipv4 and ipv6 they will share share this information like the description uh, the clock rate they will share all that okay no shutdown you don't have to do really no shutdown again if you did it for ipv4 you don't have to do it for ipv6 so if you did that in ipv4 the only thing that you need to do is give an uh, ip address 
To verify summary interface's status, show IP interface read. The best command, that's the command I will go right away and find out. This, well, what do we need to find out here? We need to find out what is our interfaces. How do they look like? Well, for this router, it's serial 0, 0, 1, or 0, forward slash 0, forward slash 1. Some routers may be 0, forward slash 1, 1. So you need to check what is the name of your interfaces. As well as some interfaces maybe, or some routers, they have fast Ethernet. So instead of gigabit Ethernet. Okay, so we have here that we have configured an IP addresses. We assigned an IP address. If you get from DHCP, it will say here, DHC, uh, here it will say DHCP. This says that we have configured layer one is up. So there's electricity there, PAL, and layer two is up as well. So there's good configuration. For IPv6, or the routing table, like I said to you, every time we create an IP address, like for example, in interface, give an IP address, do no shutdown, and layer one up, and layer two is up as well, then it will go to the routing table. In the routing table, we have a directly connected route. So we have two directly connected route and local route as well. This is the first with the C is directly connected network address. So directly connected network address. And with the L, is the IP address on that network. So the C here, right, C, this one, 192.168.10.0 forward slash 24, is saying, okay, well, there's a network here, 192.168.10.0 forward slash 24. Cool. This L says, okay, there's an IP address on that, our IP address on that network is this. So it's telling you about this IP address. The reason until iOS 15 we didn't have this, we only had the C's, not L. L, this came out later because it will be easier to identify the router, will be easier to identify a packet that is destined for the router. Same thing for the other interface and the serial interface as well. To verify interface configuration, show running config and then interface G00. Here we can see the IP address description. Now, no shutdown. It doesn't show up there. It's only uh, because that's not going to be on the on the on the running configuration. Show IPv6 interface brief. Same thing. We'll see here as well. We can see that we have a network address, and each interface is going to have a link local address. Now, link local address, as you can see from this video, from this slide, the FE80 is being built. That's a here FE80 that's being built itself. We have not configured it. The router will build it up. Um, so for example, let's go here. This is better. FE80 starts with, and it's going to use its own MAC address to come up with the rest 64-bit. Now the MAC address is 48 bits. So it's going to use all this. That's a MAC address, and that's for the, from the MAC address. So these two parts are from the MAC address. So this part is OUI, OUI of the MAC address, and this is just a normal, a normal ID of the of that organization unit and in the middle is added ff fe to make 64 bit because it's only 48 bits and it's missing 16 bits and the 8 bit is is converted from zero it became one okay verify the uh, router one routing table show ipv6 root so show ipv6 root again same information we have a connected directly connected network so that's our network here which is directly connected and to get to that network, we use G00, which is this interface. So we're talking about this network here. And local air, uh, the IP address on that network, on that directly connected network, you can see it here, this one as well. And it's this IP address on this interface here. To verify connectivity, ping, you can use ping, the IP address. And if you get exclamation marks, that means it's working. So when we run in show commands, show IP interface brief, for example, like this, what we can do, we can tweak something. We can remove some stuff. For example, imagine if you do show running config and you will have like, I don't know, 10 pages of running configuration. You don't want to see that. You don't want to go to spacebar, spacebar, spacebar. You can tweak it. You can just say, for example, I want to just see a section of something, or I want to see a beginning of something, or I don't want to see something. For example, in here, we do the same command, show IP interface brief, but now we use pipe and we say we just want to see the up. So we only want to see like whatever is up like this. Yeah, We do not want to see the down ones. So there we go. 
I'm just going to show you the up. It's going to filter the down one. Same thing. For example, we want to see the section line console. So line console. So that's, it gives you only that section, nothing else on the running configuration. For example, we can go the other way around. We can go just include down and it will show us all the interfaces they are administratively down or just down, layer two down. Show IP interface, we can exclude something. We can say, okay, well, we don't want to see anything that's up. So it will give you, will return the same command as the one before or same output as the one before. Show running config and we can begin at something. So begin at line and it starts from the line and it goes right to the end. So we can see, uh, we can say a section. We just want to see some section, line, line console, for example. We can include only something, include down. We can exclude something and we can begin at some certain line. So you can say begin at router OSVF, for example. Command history features. The command history feature temporarily stores a list of executed commands. So whatever you type. By default, you store 10 commands in the buffer. You can recall these commands by pressing Control P or by default, you know, everybody does it, just use up arrow rather than two keys, Control P and so on. Or you can go down arrow as well. You can use show history to see what has been saved in the history. And you can change the size of the histories, how many commands are by default. So you can go up to 255, for example. If you, see, if you say zero, then nothing will be stored in the history. So you can say uh, terminal history size 200, then it will show it will store up to 200 uh, commands in the history. Thank you very much for watching this section 4.1 initial configuration of router. Please have a look at other videos and don't forget to subscribe. My name is Astrid Krasnici and next video is 4.2 routing decisions. Bye bye.